Hey there friends, it's Daniel here. I hope you guys are having an awesome week. Today, I wanna to talk about getting rid of fuzzy hair, fuzzy backlit hair, okay? This is the example that I've got up on my screen here. We're inside of Photoshop. This is an unaltered, out of camera image of a mommy and her daughters that we shot in this beautiful natural light, okay? It's beautiful bi-directional natural light in this case. For those of you who are a little bit confused by this term that I bring up often, it just means light coming from two directions, okay? I'm not talking about the source, I'm talking about the direction. Bi-directional light, okay? In this instance, I've got light that's emanating from behind me, from open skies, okay, open blue skies that is, and this is what's creating this beautiful soft wash of light on them. And of course, as you can see, those gleaming eyes, those little catch lights in the eyes, okay? This is what brings it to life. And then the second direction of light is actually emanating from behind them. The sun is behind them, round about here where my mouse is waving around, and it's behind trees, and it's sort of filtering out some of that light, but we've got some light hitting the backs of them, and this is creating this beautiful rim light around their hair. Now, of course, with rim light comes a little issue when we're looking at hair, and this is what I wanna talk about today. It creates this fuzzy look, okay? The light is hitting the back of the hair, and it's highlighting all of those strands of hair, and it's making it look a little bit untidy, okay? So this is one of the drawbacks of having this beautiful rim light around your subjects because it brings out those little flaws, okay? It brings out all of those little flyaway hairs. And in this case, it's done two things. It's kind of given them a orange highlight, which is quite deep, okay? It's quite saturated as such. And this is what I wanna subdue in this tutorial today. And if you guys find yourself in this type of situation, what I'm about to explain is gonna help you alleviate some of these issues, okay? So there's two things that I wanna do with you guys today in this session. That is to smooth out that hairline just a little bit and also subdue the very saturated orange colors that they've got on their hair. Now, obviously their hair is that color, okay? There's a certain quality to it, it's a deep brown. And when the light hits their hair at the back like it is, it kind of turns it this really deep orange color, okay? Or really saturated orange color. And that's exactly what I wanna fix today in this portrait, okay? As for the rest, I love the soft natural light that is actually present in this shot. And this is why I had them lined up in this particular scenario. Now. Camera wise, I was actually using a Sony A9 in this instance, and I was pairing it up with a Sigma Art 135 millimeter F1.8, okay? In this instance, I shot it at F2.2, just as a safety net, because I really came in and framed in tight on them. And because the little daughter over here is a lot less bigger than mom and the sister over here, I was a little bit scared that I might get her out of focus. So I played it safe. Instead of f1.8, which I usually do on this lens, I shot at f2.2 just to give me a little bit of leeway as such, okay? I wanted to make sure that she was in focus, mom was in focus, and the older sister over here was in focus. Obviously, they're a lot taller, and obviously when they leaned over the rail over here, this wooden rail, it might have put them at a different distance to the camera, okay? Now, obviously in this instance, I actually lined them up myself and I just try to make sure as far as possible that they would be in line with each other so that they'd all be in focus. But like I said, as a safety net, I also narrowed my aperture from 1.8 to f2.2 and I got everybody in focus. Now, settings wise, we were shooting at 1 3 20th of a second with an ISO of 200, okay? It was slightly elevated in this case here, so it can bring in more light into the scene. Now, let's get stuck in with what we wanted to do in the first place, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is create a copy of my background. How do I do that? I press Command-J or Alt-J if you're on a PC, and that creates a duplicate of my background, okay? Now, with layer one selected, what I wanna do is just bring them into view over here, and I wanna go over to my filter menu, and I wanna go down to camera raw filter. Once I'm in the filter menu here, I'm gonna head down to my color mixer tool right here. I'm gonna click it once. By default, it might show mixer in your instance, 
all you need to do is click on where it says point color. Now this is something that Adobe have recently released to Photoshop and Lightroom, point color. And what I'm gonna do is just demonstrate how I'm gonna use point color in this instance to ease back on the saturation of the highlighted hair here, okay? Now what I wanna do is just zoom in a little bit here. I wanna go over to point color. I wanna grab this little icon over here, which is the eyedropper tool. And I wanna drop it on something that's really, really orange in this image, okay? Obviously the hair over here. I'm gonna click it once here, and you're gonna see nothing happens, okay? What we need to do is ask Photoshop what it actually selected in this instance. And we do that by going down to the range selector over here and clicking on this mask icon, okay? It says range overlay. Enable to highlight selected colors. So we're gonna do that just to get a reference of what's being selected. As you can see here, let's switch that on again. You can see here that their hair has been selected. Some of their skin tones is being selected and some other colors in the jackets over here are being selected, but the roof in the background is also being selected as well as the rail that they're leaning on. Okay, so there's a couple of elements that are being selected and it's obviously selecting that range of oranges. Now I wanna constrain that range of oranges to a range that is only going to select this very bright, saturated hair or rim light on the hair, okay? So what we need to do in this instance is find that range of colors. We wanna reduce this range, maybe down to plus 30 in this instance. And we've got three other variables that we can change here to capture the colors in those areas. First of all, some of the skin tones has been selected. Now, what are skin tones made out of? They are made out of reds and yellows. I'm gonna go down to the hue range over here. And as you can see, we've got a red range over here. It goes kind of sort of like a pinky color. And I wanna move this range back this way. And you'll see straight away, as I do that, their lips are becoming desaturated, okay? So in other words, it's moving it away from that color range, okay? So we're gonna move this little bar right here. And we're gonna move this one here a little bit closer. Somewhere over there, okay? Now you can see some of these skin tones are becoming gray, but we still got a good selection of those oranges in their hair, right? So let's be careful what we're doing here. Let's get this little orange area right here. And I'm also gonna pull in this side over here because we've got some yellowy greeny colors in the background here that we don't need. So I'm gonna move the range selector over here and you're gonna see some more of my image turning this gray color. Now we're starting to see a range of oranges being selected. That which is in the hair, some of those colors inside of the skin tones, okay? The building in the background here, the shed in the background here, the roof tiles are being selected there. And what we need to do now is look at what else we can move around. The hair over here is a lot more saturated than these areas over here. So let's move the saturation away from this area over here. And we're looking for the more saturated areas. Okay, so let's move that over. And voila, look at that. Okay, now suddenly our background elements over here are not being selected anymore. We're getting closer to that orange edge on their hair, okay? How do we further refine this mask? What we're going to do is go down to the luminance range in this instance, and we move the luminance range. We're not looking for any of the dark color areas. This is in the dark shadowy areas. We're just looking for those little highlights on their hair. So what do we do? We move the luminance range. We wanna take it away from those dark areas and we wanna tackle those really bright areas right here, okay? Let's just turn that back on there. We can further adjust the range over here until we're getting a lot less selected in their skin tones, okay? So we're getting very, very close to where we wanna be. Let's just make a couple of little adjustments over here. Bring this in over here, and let's look at the range over here and over there. We're gonna make some fine tunes to these areas, okay? Again, somewhere over there, okay? Let's look at this now. Right, now we've got a nice selection of those deep orange colors in the hairline or on the rim of the hair. And all I wanna do now is just bring down the saturation just a tiny little bit, okay? Look at that, minus 10, minus 11, that was absolutely fine, okay? So let's have a look at the before and after. Before and after. 
It's a subtle change that we've done there, but we've brought down that saturation somewhat, okay? We minus 11 from the saturation. I could bring up the luminance to make it brighter, but that's not what we want to do here. We just want to bring down the illumination just a tiny little bit over here as well. But I think I'm happy with that. So we went from there to there. We've subdued the very strong orange colors in the hairline right there. Let's okay that. The next step is to correct or finesse those fine strands of hair. So let's have a look at how we go to deal with that. Let's look at the older daughter over here. I'm gonna flatten my image quickly, okay? And I wanna create a copy of my background again. So Alt J or Command J. And this time around, I'm going to zoom into the hairline over here and I'm going to use my lasso tool. And all I wanna do is just draw all along the edge of the hair down here like this and come back over the hair just like that, okay? And what we're going to do is generate a fill here. I'm gonna click Generate Fill, click Generate, and let's ask Photoshop to give us different versions of this hair, okay? Maybe a version that's got less flyaway hairs, maybe a smoother looking hair, maybe a more combed hair. So let's wait for those results to generate here. And the really cool thing about this process is that you're gonna get three different options and look at that, okay? This one over here has taken a whole bunch of those flyaway hairs out. Let's have a look at that. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so that's one thing we can do there. We can ask Photoshop to regenerate that area once again, just to give us alternative results. So as you can see here, we are now finessing and making the hairline a lot smoother. We're just gonna wait for the next set of results just to see what we get. There's a few more flyaway hairs there. That's actually looking quite nice. Let's go over this side of the hair and you'll notice that I'm sort of drawing inside of the line of the hair down in this area here. I'm gonna go across her shirt a little bit here and then select all of those little stray hairs around that area like so, okay? Generate the fill, click generate, and let's review the results from that, okay? These little flyaway hairs that still remain over here can be taken out with something like the remove tool. We'll have a look at that in a moment, okay? Look at how we've sorted out that hair. I don't mind a few flyaway hairs, but that's now too smooth, okay? Let's keep it real. Keep a couple of the flyaway hairs in there because it's gonna make it look a lot more natural, okay? We don't wanna completely get rid of them. What we'll do is we'll head on over to our remove tool here quickly. And we may have to flatten our image quickly here. There we go. And we'll grab the remove tool and just remove some of those flyaways, okay? We don't wanna get rid of them completely because that will be unnatural. But as you can see here, we've changed up the look of that hair. It's not so fuzzy anymore, but we've kept it real at the same time. Let's carry on going. Okay, mom's hair over here. Same thing, grab the lasso tool. Let's just make sure we're making a copy of our background, okay? And we're just gonna highlight around the hair, especially hair that gets fuzzy like this right here, and then double back and just follow around the hair, okay? I'm keeping quite close to those strands of hair and generate fill, click generate, and <laughs> let's have a look at the results that we get, okay? Her hair seemed quite fine over here, but it's just this little edge over here that got a little bit fuzzy. I'm just gonna help mom groom her hair a little bit here, and that looks way, way better, okay? Like I said, you need to make a calculated decision leaving in some of those little strands of hair to keep it real. We don't wanna smooth it, otherwise it'll look cut out, okay? Let's continue to the younger sister over here. Let's do the same all along the edge over here, down here, capture those little strands of hair, and we can carry on going around like this if we want to, and capture all of the hair. Okay, we can do it all in one go, but I like to split it up into little pieces here because I wanna maintain 
high resolution results from smaller selected areas okay so let's click generate fill click generate and let's have a look at those results so we'll wait for those three little options over there to be populated so we can see our different variations on the hair okay there we go look at that okay that's way way neater than before okay so this is just one way to fix those flyaway hairs in a black lit situation like we're seeing in this instance okay so there we go we have done two things in this tutorial we've fixed those little flyaway hairs that looked quite busy we replaced it with a new version of the edge of their hair and of course we desaturated those very very bright orange rim light hairs around their heads so folks thank you so much for tuning in today and we'll see you in the next session cheers for now